Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. We're going to talk about the Insert Edge Loop Tool. It's a deceptively simple command, it's a deceptively simple tool. And to demonstrate it, first I'm going to create a polygon plane. I'm going to make one real quick, hide the grid. And then I'm going to make sure that my uh, show wireframe on shaded is active which is the button right here I'm going to increase the subdivisions of my plane a little bit just to give it some geometry so we can see some edges already alright so edit mesh insert edge loop tool I'll click it it gives me this arrowhead shaped cursor and by clicking and dragging on any edge it will insert this dotted line and because I have the left click held down and I'm dragging along this edge I can fine-tune my placement where I want the edge loop and then I let go and it creates it so it can be very easy to just insert a ton of edges everywhere um, so, so that's pretty much how most people use this tool is just like click 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 and I'm done let me just undo all this and show you a couple of different things about it so first I'm going to click and drag. Let's say I want to put this edge loop not in the middle of this row or this column or however I want to put it, but I want to put it like I want it to be one quarter of the length of this edge over here. And right now I just kind of eyeballed it, right? But there, there is a way to make sure that you've got, got it right where you want it. You can go over here to the channel box and click on the input for that action, the poly split ring one, click it. Lots of stuff over here, but the one we're looking at right now is weight. And click on the name, middle click and drag, and you can see how the edge loop will move between one side to the other based on the weight value. And the weight goes from zero to one, where zero is all the way to the left, and one all the way to the right. So if I want this to be literally one quarter of the distance from this point to this point, the weight would be 0.25. So I enter that in there, enter 0 0.25, hit enter. So now I can be assured that this weighting has made this line exactly one quarter of the distance. So that's one of the more basic uses of this tool. But let's go into more of the details. I'm going to double click the uh, insert edges loop tool icon over here on the left and you can see some of our tool options and right now I have the default settings the first one we're going to look at is the maintain position and right now it's relative distance from edge and to really show this properly let me let me grab some of these middle vertices and scale them just so we're not working on a perfect grid okay so relative distance from edge if I click and I haven't changed anything I still have my default settings if I click and drag here you can see how the line changes shape and relatively the same distance from here to here is being observed throughout and it's relative it's not exact you can see this line here is slightly longer than this line here but it's trying to maintain a relative distance from edge now the equal distance from edge if I click and drag you can see you get a much different result and what this is doing is when I let go this line here is literally the same distance as all these lines and so it's trying to maintain the same distance from this point to this point along this entire inserted loop I'm going to do that so let me click again if I click see right here so this distance between this point and the point I click on is going to be maintained throughout the entire edge loop so when I let go here this distance from point one to point two right here this line let me uh, maybe it'd be easier if I select it this edge is the same length this edge is the same length as that edge 
as that edge, as that edge, and that edge. So these edges are all the same exact length, and because the difference, because I scaled those vertices earlier, the remaining space on the other side of the edge loop varies. And that's using an exact, an equal distance from edge option here. So that's the main difference. Relative distance, it kind of modifies the, the uh, loop shape to get it relatively in the same area like even in the middle of this loop as opposed to the equal distance which can be a lot different I think I'll do all these okay so the next one is the multiple edge loops and this one's a little bit different if I select it this number of edge loops and use equal multiplier options they become ungrayed out right now they're grayed out because they don't apply to the relative distance or equal distance options but the multiple edge loops option uh, releases those two commands as being modifiable and right now we're going to keep them at the default however instead of number of edge loops being two I'm going to put that back down to one just so you can see the difference when I click with this with multiple edge loops active I click and drag you'll see that the edge loop does not move it is literally stuck right there in the middle if I click and drag see it won't let me so when I click back over oops, to the uh, input option even adjusting the weight doesn't do anything I can't move this it it literally will insert it right in the middle of this edge loop going back to the original tool options I can increase this number of edge loops say to three and click and you can see that immediately it adds these three edge loops all at once and they're equal distance between each other by default and I can't move it after clicking click and drag nothing happens it stays where it is and I let go and it creates the edges now my plane is getting cluttered so I'm going to create a new object and delete this let's make a sphere just to get something different I'll decrease this so it's not quite so dense something like that so here's my sphere go back to my insert edge loop so again if I click and drag nothing happens but it inserts three edge loops at once now one thing too that's important you'll see that it did not go it did not continue these edge loops all the way to the point and that's because this face is a triangle it's one two three sides it's not a quad and so if I say if I go back to my relative distance option click and drag it tries to maintain this edge loop function and it only tends to work on quads so like if I took uh, say the split polygon tool and just kinda cut this up a bit and now if I use my insert edge loop and click see it only works on this one face because all these other faces that are surrounding it are not quads are not four-sided these up here all these are four-sided faces if I click and drag it inserts along the entire row so keep that in mind if you are trying to insert an edge loop and you click and all you get is one or it doesn't work at all check out your faces around here and see if any of them need to be modified to become quads or four-sided so back to multiple edge loops there's this checkbox here it says use equal multiplier and by default it's on and so what does that mean let me go back down to one for my number of edge loops just so it's easier to see and I'm going to click and drag and nothing happens when I drag so I just click and let go and it creates the edge loop but what did that do what does this checkbox mean it's easier to see I go to like a profile view so this is the edge loop we're worried about right here 
this edge loop right here that we just put in. If I go to the latest poly split ring, so down here you have profile curve input. If I click it, middle click and drag, you can see that I can offset that curve along the surface. So you notice that when I inserted this curve, inserted this row of edges I should say, that it does not follow the contours of the sphere. You know, just kind of a straight line right here. If I wanted this sphere to can remain rounded, I can click and drag this and offset that by just a tad, just so I can maintain that rounding shape of the sphere. But let me increase this a lot just to exaggerate it. So it's like a mohawk. You can see that it is pulling out from the surface of the sphere an equal distance all the way around from tip to tip. Going back to my options here, use equal multiplier has, has been turned on. However, one thing that's nice about having history is you can go back into these inputs and change these options. So here, right here in the input uh, list, you see use equal multiplier on. I can literally click here and turn it off. And if you watch the sphere, when I hit enter, you can see the result of the change. So use equal multiplier being off now, you can definitely see a change in what happens. And I can adjust this profile curve input here. So you can see that it is not equal distance all the way around. It's, it's using the uh, size of the profile of the normals and so on to create this shape. But use equal multiplier, if I turn that back on, hit enter, it maintains an equal distance all the way around. And by default, that's turned on. So autocomplete, this, uh, my sphere is getting cluttered now with all these edges I've been added. Let me just delete that. Now I'll create a cube. There we go. So autocomplete is pretty straightforward. Right by default, it's checked on. If I uncheck it, I'm going to go back to my relative distance from edge maintain position the default uh, insert option up here. Autocomplete is turned off. When I click, you can see I don't have the dotted line going through. I have to click and then click. Click. Now this is very similar to how the split polygon tool works or one of these other tools that you might be familiar with. Only this difference is the split polygon tool, if I click from here to say up here, it will split the face from this point to this point. However, with this insert edge loop command, or tool I should say, if I click up here, it actually changes where the loop gets added to the whatever your last click was. And with the with using autocomplete, with having autocomplete turned off, at this point, if I hit enter, it inserts the edge loop without having to go all the way around. So I can, if I did not want this edge loop to finish the entire loop around the cube, this would be how an easy way of making that work. What I typically tend to do though, just because it seems to be quicker, is if I turn autocomplete back on, if I click and drag, and I have my edge inserted, if I select the ones I don't want, and then go to edit mesh, delete edge, vertex it'll delete those edges after the fact so it just depends on which method you find quicker or easier fixed quads we're going to skip that I usually just say leave that on because it's a good idea to have <laughs> to fix any errors and this checkbox kind of handles that for you you don't even have to think about it I just say leave that turned on now smoothing angle well, my cube's not going to really help with that, so let me delete the cube. Let's create a cylinder. We're making all kinds of stuff today. So smoothing angle is at 30 degrees, and this is a 0 to 180 degree uh, slider here. 
and by default at 30. We'll put 30 back. Just briefly a little side tangent. If I uh, go to normals, harden edge, you can see that you can see all the facets of the sphere. So all the edges have been hardened. So let me go back to my tool here. So smoothing angle is 30. If I click and insert an edge now, you can see that you don't see the facets for that edge. And if I change the profile curve input to kind of pull it out, you can see that the edge loop on the very end is not a hard edge, it's kind of a smooth gradient right here. So let me insert another edge, and this time with smoothing angle turned to zero. Click. And now with this next one, with the newest one, I should sit and pull it out. And now you can see I have a hard edge here. So that's how I can really show you how this is supposed to work. So this is with a smoothing angle of 30 degrees, and this is with a, the smoothing angle of zero. So you can definitely see the difference between how that works. So a couple more things I want to show you. Go back to the options here. <clears throat> if I turn off autocomplete, one thing that's kind of cool is I can click, click, and then click, click. So you can see that you don't have to insert your row literally in one line of edges. With the autocomplete turned off, you can direct it to flow however you wish and hit enter and with fixed quads checked on this is what it gives you it automatically uh, creates this edge here to fix that quad shape but that's one thing that's very cool about this command this tool is that it's got a lot of hidden depths if you don't think about it and, and are just kind of uh, let me reset but just, just kind of clicking around and adding edge loops you're, you're getting edge loops that's for sure but there's a lot of different things in here that can make this tool even more useful. Anyway, I hope you learned something about the Insert Edge Loop tool. If you have any suggestions, questions, if you have any requests for tools I should go over next, definitely let me know. Please feel free to subscribe or comment, like this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. This has been Michael for the Maya Tool Belt, and I'll see you next time.